Hi there, welcome back. This is Casey, and we're going to be doing an iris reading today. We're starting with the left eye and taking a look right away at the constitution for this person. We're looking at the constitution based on the tribecula or the iris fibers and how closely woven they are and how straight they are. And this person does have a strong constitution as well as there are signs of inflammation in this eye. So, um, and this would be systemic inflammation throughout the entire body. This is a true blue iris, strong constitution, strong genetic heritage. And you can see the inflammation in the bright white of the tribecula and the iris fibers. So um, you can also see it in, and I have cropped this photo, but there is a lot of red showing up in the sclera. Not all visible in this photograph, but when you see a lot of red in the sclera or the area outside of the iris, that's an indication of inflammation in the body. Okay, so let's start with the center of the eye, which is the pupil, and the pupil and the pupillary margin uh, represent the stomach lining, and there does seem to be a bit of darkening around the edge of the pupillary margin, so I would say there is some level, um, not into the chronic or degenerative stages, but there is some level of challenge with nutrient absorption and assimilation as indicated by the dark edges of this pupil. And as well, I'm seeing that the pupil is slightly constricted. So that would indicate to me some tension within the central nervous system. And as I see this tension in the central nervous system, I'm going to point out also that there are some nerve rings in this iris. You can see them right in here. So the contraction furrows or circular rings, also known as nerve rings and referred to by Denny Johnson as rings of freedom. So when you have nerve rings in the iris, that is indicating tension in the autonomic nervous system, specifically the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So it does show some signs of tension and possibly levels of anxiety that have entered into the system from the external or internal environment. So we're seeing a lot of inflammation, a strong constitution, some signs of dis-ease within the nervous systems. And let's see what else we see. I have a few notes here from this person. So some of the things that she is working on are irritable bowel syndrome. And I just wanna say, when you have this much inflammation in an iris, and especially so here is the stomach area and then this area right in here would loosely be defined as the bowel wall or the autonomic nerve wreath. So you can see that from this line and um, towards the center, so towards the pupil, this would this is going to show us the whole entire digestive system or at least the stomach and bowels we also have of course the liver and gallbladder and pancreas involved in the digestive system so when you see this much inflammation in an eye and it is systemic and it is quite concentrated in the stomach and bowel area um, it's not surprising that someone would be experiencing symptoms um, that relate to what the medical community calls um, 
irritable bowel syndrome. So symptoms for IBS include bloating, gas, constipation, and just, just general stress within the digestive system. And to me, that would go right along with how much inflammation that we are seeing in the digestive system. So along with the inflammation, I'm also seeing, in particular, there is an area right in this region in here, and this would be related to, if you take a look at the chart over here, this would, re would be related to the small intestines and then the transition into the large intestine right in this area in here. And there seems to be somewhat of a delineation. And the stress from this area that I'm seeing does look to be affecting this whole entire region of the iris and the body, which would be, as you can see from the chart, we have the eye itself, we have the jaw, we have the mouth. Um, and let me see if I can see more specifically uh, the forehead. So I'm just gonna take a look at my iridology software and just see if anything more specific is coming up. So, you know, in general, it is just the small intestine and the transition of the um, transverse colon. There's something going on in that area that is affecting this whole entire section of the body. So, um, I would say that this would be related to the digestive system, so whatever might be going on. We also have a few nerve rings going through here. So we have a nerve ring here, a bit of a nerve ring here. So there is some additional stress in this area of the, the body as reflected in the iris. And that is related to the health of the small intestine and the transverse colon. Okay, and you can even see in this little section right in here how it is especially dark on that pupillary margin. So in terms of how we would approach this related to diet and herbs, I would say addressing the stomach and the bowels and reducing the inflammation in the digestive system, which is, we're gonna be coming back to that probably again and again throughout this reading for this person. But especially for this area of the eye, jaw, nose, teeth, um, that this is specifically related to the health of the stomach and bowels. All right, and so the next thing I'm seeing in the digestive system that is catching my eye is this area right in here. So I have outlined the delineation of the bowel wall. And you can see from this drawing that the bowel wall is somewhat closer to the, to the pupil in the upper portion that goes across here than it is in this area surrounding the pupil. So what that is showing in iridology is that there is quite lightly a um, occurrence of a prolapse, a prolapsus in the transverse colon itself. Okay, so when you have a prolapsus, that's just indicating there is a weakness in that connective tissue in the transverse colon and that it has dropped down and that it could be it could be a major it could be a minor contributing factor to the digestive malaise that this person is experiencing okay so let's see what else we can find um, just in this area so 
we have some radii solaris with these little separations in the iris fibers. And again, we're back into this little section here. Um, but throughout the um, stomach and bowels, we're seeing a few radii solaris, probably more up in this area where the transverse colon is dropped. And the radii solaris are indicating that there are toxins that are being fed through the bloodstream um, from the digestive system into other areas of the body. And so we have, okay, so we have this one in particular right in here that's catching my eye. And then there's a little marking right in here, and I'm actually going to change color because we're we're going to be focusing on this area for a few minutes. And this would be the area above the transverse colon, and it is the head and brain area. And we're going to be looking at any of the brain centers that might be related to what's going on in this area. Overall. So there is a lot of bright white in the iris fibers. There's a lot of white in this true blue eye. And there's also just pretty much isolated. There's a few other areas of discoloration, but for the most part, there is some discoloration of yellowing up in the head and brain area. So this could be lymphatic stagnation going from the acute stages into the subacute stages, which is what I'm seeing it as. When you see yellow in the gut, it can also indicate an accumulation of sulfur, but I'm seeing this as the progression of lymphatic stagnation from the acute to the, to the subacute stages. So when you have a lot of inflammation, nerve rings, lymphatic congestion in the head and brain area. That can indicate, and I've seen this just from experience from doing iris readings, that a lot of people that have a lot of inflammation, a lot of congestion in the head and brain area, also express um, concerns about anxiety. A lot of times that translates into anxiety. A lot of times it can translate into um, the condition that we refer to as brain fog. And literally, like it's it's just sort of cloudy and foggy and congested up in this area. So that is a possibility for this person. Um, that's not a symptom that she mentioned, but you know, we just have a few things that we're talking about that I have received from the intake form, but I will check in with her and see if this is actually the case where she may be experiencing any kind of brain fog or anxiety. Okay, so um, this one radii solaris here, it seems of all the, the brain centers that seems to be catching my attention the most, and this is the um, inherent mental or anxiety zone. So Already we're seeing that there could be the occurrence of some anxiety just based on the inflammation in the head and brain area. And now we're seeing that the brain zone um, associated with anxiety, the inherent mental zone, has a radii solaris going through it. So that would support that notion that there could be some anxiety going on for this person. So when you see a brain zone highlighted such as the inherent mental, you're going to be looking down across the radial. So like diagonal from that brain zone will be the area of the kidney and adrenal for the left side. So I'm seeing this section in here as the kidney and adrenal. I am seeing some inflammation in that left adrenal gland right in here. 
and just some overall inflammation in the entire kidney area, but especially in the adrenal gland. But, you know, with an iris type like this, it's a strong constitution and there aren't really any large lacuna or openings in the iris fibers. So it's just gonna be nuances and how bright white things are. And then we also have, of course, a few you know, other markings like the nerve rings. We have a few other clues, like especially these little Sora spots that we're seeing. So we'll get into that. Um, but there does seem to be, just like up in this area here, it's sort of like this, this area is sort of defined itself. And there does seem to be some stress in the kidney and adrenal area. And that's just something that you check automatically when you look and notice that the inherent mental zone has a radii solaris through it. Okay, let's see what else is going on. There could very well be, so like for instance, right in here, you don't see the radii solaris but you see this extra it's sort of emphasize this little stripe right here it's extra white extra inflamed and this is the um, five senses area so I wouldn't really call that a radii solaris but there is some emphasis in that area for this person and that is simply the area that involves visual auditory gustatory, olfactory, and tactile senses. So just overall, we're seeing a lot of focus in the head and brain area and a lot of inflammation. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline this area. This is the five senses. And I want to check and locate the pituitary gland because again this is going to be the area of the pituitary gland there's absolutely something going on in there so what i'm picking up on are you know they it may seem very subtle for anybody who's watching but there's so much inflammation in this area and so much congestion that it's just that's just how it is it's it's a bit subtle but you can see how it's a little bit darker in this area and that is the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland is related, it's thought of as the master gland, it's related to the health of all of the other glands and including the ovaries, the adrenal gland, the um, thyroid and parathyroid and so on. So I wanted to take a look at the pituitary gland because we do have some concern for this person in regard to the um, hormonal system, the female reproductive system. So the pituitary gland would be the first place to start and then I would take a look at the ovaries after that. So we do have some uh, focus on the pituitary gland when this happens, I recommend that people take the pituitary gland formula. If you're following the doc Dr. Morse protocol, he has a pituitary gland herbal formula, and I recommend the tincture of that, so the liquid um, formula. And I've found that personally and for clients to have great results. So it will affect the reproductive system balance out the hormonal system and help balance, bring balance and ease to the rest of the glandular system or the endocrine system. Okay, so we're seeing pituitary, we're seeing the five senses, we're seeing the inherent mental or anxiety zone um, and then there is a bit going on, let's see here, it 
in, let's see, this whole entire section over here we, we pretty much covered, but there was also some inflammation in this area, and that is the uh, another area of um, a bit of stress or anxiety. It's called the perfectionism, self-stress, ego pressure zone. So that has to do with blood pressure, decision making, and psychological stress reactions. So that is this area right in here. And if you would like to read up more on the brain zones, I have a description of that. I have a description of all the brain zones on my website. And if you're watching this video for educational purposes, I have another video on how to read your own iris so you can go in and look at the charts you can get a photo of your eyes and look at the charts and hopefully somewhat determine what, what brain zones are activated in your body. Okay. Yeah, this area, the, the facial area or the five senses is actually really catching my attention again because this nerve ring is pretty prominent right in that area. So with nerve rings, you're gonna be looking at what areas they are going through as well as if you can determine where they stop and start. So for instance, this nerve ring right here does seem to be having an origin in this area. And that area specifically looks to be like the arm area. So I would say that there could be some acute um, tension in that arm area. Get a different color. So that would be right in here. but. Um, my point is <laughs> I don't want to get lost in the arm so this would be the arm and it does look like there is some inflammation in that left arm but there's also a nerve ring that somewhat seems to be taking its origin from that area so not just the left arm but I would be looking at this section as well which is more the pleura and the rib and even like this this darker section right in here would be the breast area and that's actually one of the first areas that I noticed on this iris is it does seem to be a little bit darker so we're into more of a subacute um, level in that breast area so let me highlight that That's the breast area. And then you can see there's something interesting happening right in here, which would be the ribs. And the sore spot that we're seeing. So a sore spot is, yeah, that would be like the lung area and specifically the pleura of the lung and it's right in here when you see a sore spot oftentimes you could call it a drug deposit a sore spot um, oftentimes it has begun as a discoloration or a drug deposit but has progressed into the deeper stages and has uh, worn down the tribecula or the iris fibers to where it's into more of a chronic level. So this would absolutely be something of focus for this person, the sore spot in the lung area. And a lot of times sore, you know, areas of where there are these spots are, they can be genetically inherited, they can be um, related to toxins that were passed down and attempted to be thrown off in a childhood illness 
but most often when we have childhood illnesses, they have been repressed. So the body is unable to actually, and I, by repressed, I mean treated by conventional medicine, fevers reduced, antibiotics, all that. So what happens is the body is attempting to throw off the toxins that it inherited, but it's not quite able to. So these areas get lodged more deeply within the body. So this would be the lung, the chest and lung area, and we're very close to the left breast area. It's just a really interesting little, almost like spiral of inflammation in this area right here. And again, we're in the, the chest and lung area, um, also very close to the arm, as you can see right in here. So let's go ahead and take a look I mean, essentially it's this whole thoracic cavity that I'm being drawn to that does have some stress within it. So the chest and thoracic cavity, but let's take a look at the heart area. So this would be the heart area right in here. And this particular spot right here of stagnation or inflammation is in the heart area. So I'm not seeing that as a genetic weakness. I'm seeing that as some congestion inflammation in that area. And you can't see in this picture, but I have another picture of this iris. And in that picture, I could tell that there was some glistening at the bottom of the iris, which is usually where um, cholesterol starts to show itself in this sort of shimmer in the bottom. So, or, and the top, and then it kind of sometimes will go all the way around. So this person, I wouldn't, I would be surprised if this person did not have elevated cholesterol just based on the fact that there's so much inflammation in the body. And if you've watched any of my videos, I, I it generally comes up. The high cholesterol is absolutely not as related to what you eat in terms of this is high in cholesterol or that is high in cholesterol, but more related to how your body responds to inflammation. And I do have a separate video on cholesterol if you're interested in that, but essentially um, the liver gallbladder produces cholesterol to um, in an attempt to cool down the body. And when there's a lot of inflammation, it's very common to see high cholesterol. And so high cholesterol and congestion would be related to this area right in here as well, which is right on the heart area. So again, it's a healthy heart. We don't have a genetic pass necessarily in that area, but we do have so much inflammation and likely an excess or elevated level of cholesterol this will be something that can be addressed through the diet. So essentially, it's all gonna come back to, as it always does, eating foods that are alkaline in nature, such as the raw fruits and vegetables, especially the fruit and the leafy greens. Okay. So we can see out in this area, we're still in the lung and chest area, especially, specifically. So this whole section in here is the heart, and then out in this area, we're getting into more of the lungs, and there are a few dark spots in the lung area, as well as we still have a lot of inflammation and markings of nerve rings in this area. Okay, let me see. So this discoloration is 
what I would think of as a pre-Sora spot. And I did draw the bell wall over it, but there's a little bit of a yellowing right in this area. And this is the spleen area. And it is related also to the digestive system. So there could be some stress going on in the spleen. The spleen acts as the body's blood filter and is an integral part of the lymphatic system. So let me get a different. So definitely some focus in the spleen area and just this section of the bowel wall which is the descending colon. Okay. This area in here is especially bright white and this would indicate the upper abdomen. So in the chart, so I'm looking at the chart a little bit, but I'm also looking at my, my other screen that has my iridology software. I also have the Bernard Jensen chart here. Um, so just in case there's any confusion, I know it doesn't say that on the little graph the picture over here, but this would be the upper abdomen area and we can see already we ha we do have some stress in the stomach and bowel so that would go right along with that and then this little spot right in here again there's a little marking through it <laughs> but this is a bit of a discoloration just like this one and that is the pelvis, so there could be some kind of mm, genetic pass, I would say, in the pelvis on the left side. Okay, and next thing I want to highlight is this bright white section in here and this is actually the uterus so there is some acute inflammation in the uterus right in here And then, so this is all like sort of female reproductive area in here and down. All right. And then this is the bladder. Could be something going on in the bladder. And I just want to show where these nerve rings are going through. So the nerve rings are passing through this area, the bladder area specifically, and then into the uterus and female reproductive organs. And there is some stress um, the flash right in here, I do have another photo without the flash and um, this just, this area sort of called out to me and that is the parathyroid in here and then the thyroid. The tonsil area. So the tonsils as the lymphatic organ of the throat and the thyroid and the parathyroid usually show up when there is inflammation or stress in the thyroid and parathyroid and that is the case in this eye so it's a whole throat tonsil 
um, a thyroid, parathyroid. And the parathyroid isn't surprising at all because when you have a weak um, or compromised function in the parathyroid, it's pretty common to have compromise in the um, it's, it's pretty common to have things in the connective tissue. So compromise in the connective tissue, such as weakness, and that's, that's related to this prolapsus in the um, transverse colon. So parathyroid, you can have, it's just like weak connective tissue and it can translate in a variety of ways. You can have drooping, droopy eyelids, sagging skin, you can have hernias. Um, a lot of times um, hemorrhoids are a are, um, result of weakness in the connective tissue, um, prolapses. Um, even like in childbirth when, um, when there is the, when the uterus doesn't contract after childbirth and there can be hemorrhaging that is related to the parathyroid. Um, so yeah, I'm not surprised to see the parathyroid come up when we're, when we're also seeing this drop in the transverse colon. And let's see what else, if anything else is coming up. There's a bit of a skin ring in this iris. So there's some darkening in the periphery of the iris. More focused on this side of the iris, which is the lungs and heart area. It is, I mean, it is throughout the whole entire iris. It's over on this side also, but it's just a little bit more pronounced over here. It's darker. So when you, the darker the skin ring, you're going to be looking more internally at the organs that could be affected by that weakness. So the skin ring just indicates that there is toxicity within the integumentary system and that the skin is not able to be um, eliminating toxins as well as it could be. And the skin, the skin and the thyroid and the parathyroid are all connected. So generally speaking, when you see a skin ring, there's gonna be something going on in the thyroid, which there is. Okay, so, but overall, there's a lot of irritability and tension systemically because of the inflammation. So addressing the inflammation through diet and herbs, and I would recommend for the stomach and bowels to be taking the GI broom if you're following Dr. Morse protocol, and that will cool down, calm down, and tone that stomach and bowel area, the whole entire digestive system. It has a lot of herbs in there that are really alkalizing as well. And then just be working on moving towards a fruit diet and the fruit diet would be more for, you know, exclusively fruit, in my opinion, would be more for detoxification. Yes, it is the highest vibrational diet you can you can be eating but if you eat only fruit for a long period of time it can lead to a sense of ungroundedness because you're so high <laughs> so and especially with this level of inflammation i would highly recommend this person be eating a lot of leafy greens dark leafy greens wild greens dandelion nettle and juicing as um, as much greens as possible. So green vegetables, you know, they're not super conducive to eating raw. They really honestly like broccoli and kale and asparagus and Brussels sprouts and all of those things. They just, in my opinion, I prefer to have them steamed. So that would be an option, especially as an evening meal, but moving towards 
at least for detox purposes, a more fruitarian lifestyle. Okay, so I am going to move on to the right eye. I will see you guys in a second. Okay, 